But first to this dossier. It's made world, worldwide news this weekend, the paper prepared by concerned Western governments that mounts the case against China's deliberate cover-up of the coronavirus. Here's some more detail on it. The document has five main themes which it builds a case for. Firstly, the silenced and the disappeared. The Wuhan doctors, Li Wenlang, Afan and others, the journalists, the activists, the professors, the billionaires and the online activists, all who have either vanished or disappeared or been detained and punished. It goes on and on this list. It also mentions the case of Huan Yangling. She's a researcher at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Now, the South China Morning Post reported a couple of months ago rumours that had been swirling on Chinese social media that she was the first to be diagnosed with coronavirus, that she was, in fact, patient zero. Then came her reported disappearance. Her biography and her image have been deleted from the Wuhan Institute of Virology's website. On February 16, the Institute put out a public denial that she was patient zero, and, she, and they said that she was alive and well. But since then, there has been no proof of life, which has continued to fan speculation. And it's this case, among others, that is included in the dossier. Secondly, the second theme of it is the suppression and destruction of evidence. And I'm quoting from the dossier here. Virus samples ordered destroyed at genomics labs, wildlife market stores bleached, genome sequence not shared publicly, Shanghai Lab closed for rectification after sharing its own academic articles subjected to prior review by the Ministry of Science and Technology. Data on asymptomatic silent carriers kept secret. The third theme is the deadly denial of human-to-human -human transmission. Despite evidence of human-to-human -human transmission from early December, PRC authorities deny it until January 20. The World Health Organization does the same. Yet officials in Taiwan raised concerns as early as December 31, as did experts in Hong Kong on January 4. The fourth theme that it talks about, and again I'm quoting from this document, is the endangerment of other countries. Millions of people leave Wuhan after the outbreak and before Beijing locks down the city on January 23. Thousands fly overseas. Throughout February, Beijing presses the US, Italy, India, Australia, Southeast Asian neighbours and others not to protect themselves via travel restrictions, even as the PRC imposes severe restrictions at home. The final theme is the assault on international transparency. And I quote, as EU diplomats prepare a report on the pandemic, PRC successfully presses Brussels to strike language on PRC disinformation. As Australia calls for an independent inquiry into the pandemic, PRC threatens to cut off trade with Australia PRC has likewise responded furiously to US calls for transparency. Now, more than one government contributed to this report. The strength of language in it is beyond what any world leaders have used publicly so far. There is now a European resolution set up to, to, to set up an independent investigation into the outbreak, and this is going to be put to the World Health Assembly meeting in Geneva later this month. Now, in terms of the language that the leaders in Western nations have used on the coronavirus, we've heard what's going on behind the scenes. Now, this is what is being said publicly. Let's have a look first at United States President Donald Trump. We are not happy with China. We are not happy with that whole situation because we believe it could have been stopped at the source. It could have been stopped quickly and it wouldn't have spread all over the world. And we think that should have happened. And here's what our Prime Minister Scott Morrison is saying on why an investigation is so important. We know it started in China. We know it started in Wuhan. Um, the most likely scenario that has been canvassed relates to wildlife wet markets, but that's a matter that would have to be uh, th thoroughly assessed. This is one of the reasons why it is important that we just have a, an objective, independent assessment of how this originated and learn the lessons from how that occurred. Scott Morrison also confirmed at that press conference on Friday my story that he had been aware since early February that the virus may have inadvertently leaked from a Wuhan laboratory. Even though you think on the balance of probability uh, that this did, did not come from the lab, did you receive any early advice uh, that that was a possibility? Yeah, well, the reports that you're referring to, they, they, were, they were public. I mean, they, they were they were being reported at the time. So, of course, the government was, was aware of those suggestions. 
And just to clarify there again, that Scott Morrison says it's the most likely scenario is that the coronavirus uh, originated in the wet market in Wuhan, but it is a possibility that it was an accidental leak from one of the laboratories there, and there are two that deals in these sort of viruses, and that's why the origins should be investigated. Now, it may look like they have slightly different views, Scott Morrison and Donald Trump, but based on the conversation between the pair last week, they are in lockstep. At least that's what... Donald Trump took away from the phone call. The US ambassador to Australia, Arthur B. Culverhouse Jr., told me in a statement shortly after the phone call between the Prime Minister and the President this. He said, there is no daylight between the United States and Australia. President Trump and Prime Minister Morrison spoke as recently as Wednesday, and they committed to working together to beat this disease in the best spirit of our strong alliance. In that vein, I commend Foreign Minister Payne and her call for a hard, dispassionate look at the origins of the epidemic. This isn't about pointing fingers, he said. It is about finding out what could have been done better to prevent the disease, communicate its existence and prevent it from becoming a global pandemic. Because sadly, this won't be the last novel virus the world faces. To do better in the future, we will need to fully understand what happened in the past. And in this endeavour, I fully support calls for transparency and accountability from our Australian partners. And that call, of course, was on April 22nd. Now, irrespective of whether the virus originated in a wet market or in a laboratory, China has not acted like a responsible international citizen. Authorities tried to cover up evidence of the virus and denied that there was any human-to-human -human transmission, that it was infectious. They even claimed it was preventable and treatable. Now, this was at the critical early stage when the spread could have been substantially reduced. 